breezing. Right, today is all about street photography. The street thief is back. Oh, you know why I feel down? It was that shot that knocked me to the ground. My bloodshot eyes and broken heart, the truth was there and once again found. We're too scared to understand who I was. I'll smoke my smoke. So I shoot mostly with a 35 mil. I mean, this 35 mil is pretty much the best 35 mil I've ever owned. It's the Sony uh, Zeiss Disticon lens. They should write poetry about this thing. But I've shot street photography like wider with 24 mil lens up close. So uh, if you'll notice a lot of my street photography, the subject is in the middle. Like this. A lot of people, what they'll do, a lot I've seen with a lot of street photography, especially when people are just starting out. So just say you're the subject. They'll take a picture of you from here. Yeah? So they'll shoot you from here. Because it's kind of quite intimidating to get uh, to get center on the subject, right? Especially like with a stranger on the streets and to get in quite close as well. It's quite intimidating to do that. What I want with my images is that there's there's a feeling when they're looking at this picture that it's like, wow, like fuck, the camera has no place being there. Like how did he get the camera there? They might not even know uh, why that photograph has like a real confident feel about it. But nine times out of 10, I think with my work, it will be because I've pushed outside of my comfort zone and got in with my camera where perhaps uh, it's quite uncomfortable and intimidating to uh, to do that for a lot of people. Quite often I hear as well my workshop is like, uh, it could be like a, a well, it could be like you're shooting at a, a reception at a wedding, uh, but street photography too, it's like, oh, there's not a lot going on here. The thing is guys, it's like you're still in a moment in time here. There's a million, billion variations of movement in. Uh, like with people in any given situation, scenario, right? There's always something to photograph. So sometimes I think it's just like, we're thinking too, too broad. We're seeing the whole picture and we're not kind of zoning in on just like the nuances and the subtleties of, of, uh, of movement and of, of life, of character. And that's what it takes for street photography. This thing about being confident as well, that comes with like practice and not just practice over a period of like years but also like during the day like, like I'm more likely to get in close uh, become more daring after shooting for an hour or so right I'm also more present more in the moment so those subtleties that I was talking about earlier they become more apparent so it's just like hanging in there and, and you begin to see more clearly like after an hour after like an hour and a 30 minutes and all of those little narratives of of, of life begin uh, they just become a little bit more apparent after after you've been at it for a few hours guys I talked about equipment guys I uh, listen I shoot a hell of a lot of street photography I was talking about this lens right which has cost a shitload of money but I shoot a hell of a lot of street photography on my phone but I would rather take you by the hand as we I mean, the Street Thief account on, on, on Instagram that I have, I would say like 60-70% of that is iPhone photography, guys. So, uh, there's no excuse. By the way, guys, if you're liking this video, please leave a comment, hit the thumbs up at least, and subscribe to the channel, guys. It inspires me to do more of them. What I'll do as well, below, yeah, I'll put some links to the street photographers and kind of life photographers that, uh, they inspire me and check it out guys it's because there's some there's some real good stuff there and now i'm hooked i know i'm left to die the fact of the matter is you ain't ever going to get those kind of shots that are going to inspire people are going to like uh we're going to just make people step back and like wow like how the fuck did he get that unless you're kind of willing to put up with a little bit of discomfort, fear, and you need to just push through that, guys. You need to practice and push through. And then after a while, it's like that fear, that discomfort, it doesn't go away, you just become a little bit more willing to like walk through that door. Now you know I was down, it was that shot that knocked me to the ground. 
It was the last time I could smile It stopped me going for that while You were too scared to understand who I was I think you left this just because A broken mind's a broken dream With half a mind I know you twice as me I'll have a, a little chat about this comfort zone thing, right? In relation to street photography, okay? So, right, let's get this, I'll get a ball. Anyway, when I first was asked to do workshops, I kind of did, did them sort of painting by numbers workshops where I would give them a few tips and tricks, maybe do a shoot, a little bit of post-production, that kind of thing. I just felt there was something missing. I kind of took some time out and I rewrote the workshop based on a, kind of like some research I did on my own work. How, am I, how was I getting these shots that were kind of attractive to people in, in, with regards to them standing out? And what I saw was that I was just that little bit more willing to embrace uh, the dis discomfort that comes up in certain situations, right, when we're taking photographs. So, okay, the comfort zone. And we've all heard of the comfort zone, right, in this day and age, there's like, the bookstores, there's like three floors in Waterstones devoted to self-help books. <laughs> and um, how to be happy in 30 steps, the road less travelled, feel the fear and do it anyway, right? That kind of thing. It's like, so just for your argument's sake, okay, comfort zone. All of our experience of life thus far keeps us in here, right? Anything outside of our experience that we've not experienced in life yet, that we, we kind of don't know about, yeah? It's impossible to know something that we don't know. Try thinking of something that you don't know. It's impossible to do it, right? So it could be you have no idea how you're going to feel, what's going to happen if you ask a stranger if you could take their portrait, right? That, so that exists outside of your experience, yeah, outside of your comfort zone in effect, yeah? What happens is we get, when we get up to the edge of our, of, of our experience, of our comfort zone, there's kind of like a tension, there's like a rigor. What I've seen is that when we push through, we push through that discomfort, we, we, our experience expands, it's like we gather new information, right? And the, as soon as we're through, the discomfort falls away, yeah? There's, there's no shortcut here. To, to take the kind of photographs that you're inspired by and that you see that those guys are getting, it, it takes a, a embracing a certain amount of discomfort, guys. And the further outside of your experience, the challenges, so it could be that like, I don't know, uh, you're gonna leave your job and start a, a photography business. That could be way out here, right? It's even more uncomfortable. We need support to push through. That's, a lot of these guys have read all of these self-motivational help, self-help books, that kind of thing. They watch all of this stuff online. And what they do is like they play around on the edge, feeling a little bit uncomfortable, convincing themselves that they're pushing through. Where in actual fact, they're very rarely pushing through because it takes support to push through. So it's like this, guys. It's like we, 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 we live inside this, this box this container, yeah, it's almost like a prison. So we live inside this box, but the instructions for getting outside the box are on the outside of the box. But we need someone who's been there to support us, to, to kind of, to, to, to take us through, yeah? Otherwise it's just like walking through the desert without a map looking for water. Problem, right, with these self-help books, people read them and then they think they've had an experience of what these books are talking about. But the why you feel good reading them is because it's telling you something that you already know anyway. Like intellectual information is useless unless it's applied. And it's like what I do at my workshops is I support people to have an experience of what those books are talking about. People read those books and they think that they know. The, the complete works of Shakespeare could have been about tasting an orange. But unless you've tasted that orange, guys, you ain't never gonna know what an orange tastes like. That's a fact. Celebrate. I know you twice as me.